After watching this entire video, you are never gonna run out of content ideas ever again. Or at least, that's what one might hope. Hey everybody, my name is Micah Gonzalez, it's M-I-C-A Gonzalez with Z, and blah blah blah, fluff and waffle. Here are 52 content ideas for when you have nothing to post. Yes, we have 52 ideas here, so if you are a weekly content creator, that's like a year's worth of content just for you. And as a side note, most if not all of these ideas can work across any platform from YouTube or blogs, podcasts, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever is the new sexy content creation app out there. So make sure to just get creative and put your own spin on on these things. Let's jump right in with idea number one, a top 10 list. If you like ranking things, compiling only the best of the best, then make a top 10 video or post. It can be anything at all in your niche, like a top 10 episodes list from your favorite TV show, a top 10 list of best coffee makers in the market, or heck, maybe even a top 10 list of your favorite videos from a YouTuber that you love. Idea number two is a comparison breakdown. Now, if there are two popular things in your industry right now, why not create a detailed comparison that pits them against each other? I see videos like this all the time, posts like this all the time on Instagram. So it's stuff like which one's better, the MacBook Pro M1 or the MacBook Air M1? Also, I said that wrong. I know it's M1 MacBook Pro, whatever. Or, you know, stuff like what's better, Asana versus Trello or Notion versus Trello, stuff like that. So you can just help your audience make a better decision about buying a particular thing. Don't be afraid to be a little polarizing here. As long as you're not divisive, there is a difference. Idea number three is a step-by-step -step guide. If you can show your audience just how to accomplish a certain thing step by step, then be sure to show them how. List down the steps that they need to take in order to achieve a certain goal. Take for example, maybe wanting to start a blog from scratch, then explain the steps in that process so that they know what they have to do first, second, third, and etc. Idea number four is a product review. People are looking for reviews about stuff all the time. Heck, many channels on YouTube alone and many blogs on the interwebs and Instagram accounts are built solely as, you know, review hubs. People post reviews about things in this specific industry. Just take a page from their book and make some reviews about some hot new things people might be searching for right now. This is also a great way to grow your audience from scratch. Idea number five is a case study. Hey, maybe you lost 20 pounds without changing your diet or you made a million dollars selling t-shirts on Etsy. Why not create a case study that shows your audience a little about what went behind the scenes of your success? It'll give them a ton of inspo, plus can be really motivating for anyone who's struggling with the same goal. Idea number six is an interesting one, an open letter. Now, if you've got something you wanna share in your niche, why not communicate it in an open letter? The open letter can be for other people in your industry, for someone who once was in your shoes, or heck, it might even be for a younger version of yourself that didn't know what you know now. Idea number seven is a day in your life. Okay, let's be real here, you guys. We can be a little bunch of stalkers when it comes to our favorite content creators, so why not indulge in your secret stalkers and make a day in the life post that shows them what you do in a day. Show people what your daily routine is, walk them through an interesting event, and yes, I'm aware people have been asking me for my day in the life video, and I promise we will get there as long as I stop procrastinating and actually start. Idea number eight an unpopular opinion. Hey, so maybe you've got an opinion that's wildly different from the majority of creators in your niche. Why not represent the unpopular opinion crowd and voice out your own? Just make sure that you can stand by what you believe and oh, don't call it an unpopular opinion when obviously it's a popular stance that everyone believes anyway. Those are just not cool. Idea number nine, beginner tips. You might be super good at something after doing it for years and years, but let me tell you right now, there are people out there who are just learning about that thing that you're really good at. Maybe you're really great at crochet or digital art. Show beginners some awesome tips that you wish you knew when you first started and watch the comments of appreciation pour in. Idea number 10 are advanced tips. Just like the last idea, take some tips, but this time for more experienced or advanced users in your industry. Just like in the last idea I talked about, take some tips, but this time make them for more experienced or advanced people in your niche. Everybody is at different points in their life, especially vis-a-vis -vis skills and goals, and who knows, maybe after going through beginner tips, your audience might find themselves craving more advanced stuff down the road. Idea number 11, why should I blank? 
Why should I go vegan? Why should I buy a standing desk? Why should I not subscribe to Disney Plus? These are questions that your audience might be asking, so why not answer them in your own content? Give some very clear benefits why people should be doing something, or on the other hand, give some very clear reasons why you think people shouldn't do something instead. Idea number 12, make a reaction post. Hey look, something super cool and trendy has just happened in your niche. I'm in awe. I'm enraged. I'm so confused. Anytime something cool happens in your niche, maybe a new announcement or a leak drop for something that everyone has been hoping for, then make your reaction about it. And as a cool bonus, this is actually a really great way to trend jack and to get new people into your audience, especially if they've never heard about you before. Idea number 13 are your worst mistakes. Look, when you've been doing anything for long enough, you're bound to have made some mistakes. I know I have. So maybe you made some totally bad mistakes when you were a beginner skateboarder, or you made these mistakes when you bought your first houseplant. By showing your audience what you might have done wrong, you're basically telling them, hey, this is something that you might want to avoid for yourself. Idea number 14, your favorite blank. So if you've got a list of favorite apps or tools for studying, or maybe you can't live without these certain beauty products, share your favorites to your audience. And one great thing about this idea is you can take so much content around your favorites. So really, this idea is kind of like a five in one idea. Idea number 15, the myth buster. So in just about any industry, any niche, there's bound to be some myths that your audience might actually believe. Give them some clarity by debunking these myths and shining a light on, you know, the actual truth. Truth. And now let's move on to idea number 16, a what's hot list. So if there are any current trends, products, events, whatever else have you that your industry is just a buzz about, compile them into a list so that you and your audience can have a conversation. Maybe give your own take on these trending topics or ask your audience about their thoughts on them. Idea number 17 is an ask me anything. Michael, what keeps you motivated every day? Michael, what do you do to relax? Michael, who does your hair? These are all questions that I have gotten on my AMAs and my Instagram stories. And you know, this is always a fun thing. This is a great way to get audience interaction Action, a way to invite people just into your you know inner world and just answer their most burning questions idea number 18 get ready with me so listen up this isn't just for you know beauty and fashion bloggers out there you can actually put your own spin on get ready with me's by showing maybe your personal process of getting ready for well you know anything so maybe you're into I don't know goat breeding and you want to show aspiring goat breeders what to get ready for you know when they actually do their own thing so show them what you do in a day how do you get ready for your day of goat breeding you know this example is really weird but you get what I mean right idea number 19 is a crazy story so oh my god you guys do you remember that time when I decided to do a YouTube video about 52 content ideas when you have nothing to post about Okay, so maybe that's not the best example, but maybe you have a crazy experience, a crazy story that your audience can learn something from. Maybe you had an epiphany while walking your dog. Maybe doing supermarket chores suddenly inspired you to do something. Just don't underestimate the power of a good story for getting an important message across. Idea number 20, we're getting there guys, hitting a milestone. Hey, maybe it's your anniversary on TikTok, or maybe you just hit your first 1K followers on Instagram. Celebrate that milestone together with your audience. I don't know about you, but I think it's always nice to be included in these big new milestones of my own favorite creators. Idea number 21, what's next? What's the future of your blog, your podcast, your channel? What can people expect from you moving forward? Get them excited by sharing snippets, excerpts, or maybe hints about the future of your content. Idea number 22, an expert breakdown. Hey, so maybe you're not 100% an expert on something, but chances are you might know somebody that is. It could be another business, another brand, or somebody super notable in your niche. What you can do is simply compile some expert tips and strategies or anything that that expert is doing and then try to translate it into something that your audience can learn from as well. And you don't even have to interview that expert. All you have to do is break down whatever it is that they're doing. And as an added bonus, this might even get you on that expert's audience's radar. Idea number 23, one of my personal favorites, the ultimate guide. People who follow my blog know that I love making ultimate guides. I love creating massive posts about a specific topic and I think that it's actually a challenge and I think that's very exciting so if that's the same for you be sure to create an ultimate guide that shows your audience everything they need to know about a certain topic in your niche idea number 24 what's in your blank depending on the usual content that you make in your niche you might want to show people maybe what's in your work bag or your makeup bag 
Show them what's on your bookshelf, what's on your carry-on luggage every time you travel, maybe what's on your work desk, whatever it is. Just get creative and make sure to show people what you've got in your own personal thing and maybe ask for their reactions along the way. Idea number 25, we are just about halfway there, you guys. Your go-to toolkit. Okay, I definitely could have thought of a better name for this, but anyway, your go-to toolkit is talking your audience through your own personal toolkit or whatever you use to achieve a certain goal in your in your niche. So maybe if you're a vlogger for tech, you can show people what are the actual day-to-day -day stuff you actually use in your vlog. You I mean you probably do a ton of reviews anyway, so why not show people like, okay, so these are all the things that I've reviewed, but this is the things that I actually use. Idea number 26 is a what to expect post. What should people expect when they first start horseback riding? What do I need to know if I want to apply for a visa to this specific country? There are people out there looking for information about things like this all the time, and you've probably done this all the time. So give them an idea about what to expect, and then you can help them better prepare for their first time doing it. Ooh, also, wow, we are just about halfway through this list already. If you're getting any value out of this, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on. Idea number 27, take them on a tour. Think house tour, room tour, studio tour, kitchen tour, desk tour, world tour? Okay, so maybe not the last one, but this one is just about more of those personal things that lets your audience in, lets them learn about you via a personal space that you probably interact with every single day. Idea number 28, share the creator love. Hey, this one's really fun. If there are other creators, accounts, brands, businesses that maybe your audience should probably know about, why not share the love? Maybe tell them about other podcasts that you love listening to, study gram accounts that you absolutely love. Just be sure to like, just spread love from one creator to another. One secret to being a more joyful creator, when we lift other creators up, we lift ourselves up along the way. Idea number 29 is the collaboration. Can you maybe find a creator with a similar audience size that you can collaborate with? Maybe get them on your account. Create collaborative posts together with a goal to create something that's even better than it might have been if you'd done it all alone. And honestly, who doesn't love collaborating with fellow creators? Idea number 30, the expert interview. Okay, this is kind of like a collaboration, but instead you're going to be interviewing an expert in a particular topic in your niche. There's zero shame in admitting that we don't know everything, so why not get an expert to fill the gaps in your own content or provide value that you probably couldn't give yourself. Idea number 31, do it with me. I've seen videos like this in just about every niche that you can imagine. Work out with me, study with me, read with me, work with me, paint with me, build with me, bake with me. Really just put on that creative cap and think of something that you can take your audience with you as you go throughout your day and as long as it's related to your niche then you're pretty much golden. Idea number 32 is the super quick guide. Okay, so this is like the opposite of the ultimate guide that we talked about before. In some ways, the super quick guide can even be the bite-sized version of that ultimate guide where you show your audience everything they need to know about something but compressed into a tiny or quick post. Idea number 33, the grand reveal. If you're working on something super big, drop hints to your audience about what it is. Then when the time finally comes, make a big deal out of the thing. Honestly, consider this as your sign to make that big reveal a big thing. You've been working really hard on something for really long and you deserve to celebrate and make a big deal out of it. Idea number 34 is the year in review. Look at your year and share some major milestones that happened, some big fails you're learning from, and generally how you feel coming into a new year. I always find these types of posts fun. I'm a big fan of debriefing and reflecting, so this should come as no surprise. Ooh, are we almost at the end here? Okay, so idea number 35, do's and don'ts. There are probably a ton of things that your audience needs to know when it comes on what to do and what not to do to achieve something in your niche. Maybe it's what they should do when they buy their very first Samsung phone or what they shouldn't do if they're trying to build muscle. Whatever it is, share a helpful list of those do's and don'ts and help your audience get to where they want to be faster. Idea number 36, make a video essay. If you have spent any time on this channel, you'll know that I absolutely abuse the video essay format and I absolutely love this format because it just satisfies my need to have to contemplate, reflect, and communicate using a through line and supporting examples and stories. And even if you don't do videos, if it's not, not your chosen thing, a video essay might just be a cute way for people to actually hear from you, see the face behind, um, or hear the voice behind the content that they are probably following already. Idea number 37 are event highlights. So maybe you attended this super awesome event in your industry. Share the highlights that you found most interesting and get your audience to engage. 
Maybe you went to a OnePlus event or you went to WWDC or VidCon or something. Whatever it is, it's always fun to share highlights and to get your audience part of the conversation with you. Idea number 38 is the rant. You know what I absolutely cannot stand? People who rant all the freaking time. Like, why do we rant online? Seriously, is there no In all seriousness, if you've got a bone to pick with anything in your niche or your industry, then make sure to make a tasteful rant about it. You might be surprised how many people end up agreeing with you. And idea number 39 is I changed my mind about blank. Maybe you once said on the internet that there is no animated adult TV show that is better than BoJack Horseman. Then comes along an extremely awesome new show that just gets you to change your mind. If that's the case, then share that experience and the reasoning behind you deciding that, hey, I've got a new opinion now and I'm not afraid to share it. Idea number 40, a resource list. As creators, it's important to acknowledge that, hey, there's always going to be someone or something that knows about a particular topic more than we do. So why not compile a list of those resources, maybe all that content into a single post? Resources can be links to different articles or data or basically anything that wasn't created by you, but you compile them into something helpful for your audience to find all in one space. And can you believe we are already in idea number 41? I've got a theory. Hey, so I got a theory that people don't watch my videos all the way through here. And you know what? If you did make it this far already in this video, leave a comment saying I heart flamingos. And this really confused the comment section. You feel me? Or not. I mean, it's your life. Do whatever you want. But anyway, if you do have some theories, some speculations to share about a topic in your niche, let her rip. And we have just around 10 more ideas here. Idea number 42 is the before and after. If there is a cool transformation that you can share, show your audience some before and afters. Maybe you recently did a bedroom makeover or you had a total body or hair transformation. Whatever the case, it's always cool for people to see befores and afters of things, especially for inspiration or motivation. So I think that this is always a good idea. Idea number 43 is story time. I did already mention ideas like telling a crazy story or doing a case study early on in this video, but story times can be a little different. Sometimes they're not as crazy as like a crazy story or they're not the result of an experiment or a strategy. It could just seriously be that it's a story. So it's kind of like you're doing an open journal. You can talk about your experience, maybe running your first marathon, the story of how you tried to vlog for an entire month nonstop, whatever it is, if you can come up with something, you know, really good, a good story to get people and engage with them, then you shouldn't be afraid to tell it. Idea number 44 is to participate in a challenge. Maybe there's a cool challenge you can A, join, or B, start yourself. Either way, this might be a really cool thing to do. Whether the challenge is a one-time thing, kind of like a cinnamon challenge, or maybe it's an ongoing long-term thing like a two-week workout challenge, then why not create content about you trying this out? Idea number 45, start a series. Okay, so this is kind of a cheat because a series being a series obviously has more than just one part. So you're really gonna have more than 52 content ideas at the end of this video. Either way, start a series about anything in your niche. Maybe you have a short series of tutorials that you publish week after week for the next five weeks on Final Cut, or you decide to do a really long series documenting something ongoing in your life or business or whatever it is. Either way, it's always really cool to get your audience to keep coming back for more through serial content just like this. Idea number 46, wow, we are almost done here, you guys. A must-have list. Similar to the go-to toolkit that I mentioned before, the must-have list just tells your audience what they might absolutely need to have in order to achieve a certain goal that you're always creating content about in your niche. What are must-have things if, you know, you want to start a printing business? What are must-have things if I want to make a website? Treat this as kind of like a checklist for your audience so that nothing slips through the cracks. Idea number 47, FAQs. In any niche, in any industry, there are bound to be some FAQs or frequently asked questions about specific topics, etc. that your audience is dying to find answers to. Make it super simple to answer those burning questions by finding some FAQs that people are asking in your industry and then create a post that answers all of these. This is different from an ask me anything type of post because unlike an ask me anything, you're not going to wait for people to ask you stuff. Instead, you're just going to find some commonly asked questions in your niche and then you just go ahead and answer them. Idea number 48 is a long-term review. I already mentioned doing a review early on in this video, but I can't help but, you know, mention this one too. A lot of products, maybe strategies, courses, you know, that kind of thing. Some of these things need some kind of long-term review so that audiences know just how good these things hold up. 
For products, it's easy. Audiences want to know if maybe a gaming laptop they're interested in is still super good half a year later. But even for things like courses, it also applies. Do the lessons in the course still do you good even months later? Are there maybe updates or new things that have come up since your initial review? These are always helpful to know and it's worth considering if you're reviewing something anyway that's meant to have immense value over time. Idea number 49 is some unsolicited advice. I consider advice types of posts to be really helpful if there's just no easy way to present an idea or topic that you want to talk about. Maybe there's some extremely overrated advice in the interwebs already that you want to debunk or too many people are doing this thing that just actually isn't serving them well. Idea number 50, we're almost at the end here, is the BTS. And no, I don't mean the K-pop group. Though, honestly, why not make content about the K-pop group? I'm kidding. I'm obviously using BTS to mean behind the scenes here, so why not take your audience behind the scenes for an important thing that you might be working on? Especially if it ties into a grand reveal or a big project that you want to show them uh, at some point, then give them a peek behind the curtain. That's actually gonna be a super cool thing that you can do. Idea number 51, second to the last, is the history lesson. And wait before you say, what the heck, Michael, a history lesson? That's so boring. Hear me out. There might be some super cool stuff in your niche or your industry that people don't really know much about, especially where it might have come from or what went into turning it into the thing that it is today. Why not flex a little bit of your research skills and give your audience a fun and engaging walkthrough about something that's really iconic in your niche? If anything, it'll show that you're a serious content creator that really knows their stuff. And finally, we are wrapping this up with idea number 52, the massive list. Okay, I just had to end this here. Make a massive list dedicated to just one topic, kind of like this video. And look, if you can't do crazy stuff like Mr. Beast does, then you don't have to. You might just be able to get away with creating a massive list, either a rank list, an ideas list, or really anything. Also, as a side note, I'm quite a fan of doing massive lists myself, and my 350 plus passion project ideas is still the top post on my blog up to now. So that's just a little more insight for you. And there we go. Thanks for watching all the way to the end here. If you did like this, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video very soon. Bye!